Hey guys, in this video we'll go over the SQLite implementation in Flutter. Hey guys, in this tutorial we'll go over the implementation that we use in two of our production apps using SQLite. To follow along with the tutorial, you can download the code from the download code button under the thumbnail. The main focus of this tutorial will be around the schema management that will be to create your database tables and also to migrate your database tables to the latest versions of your database. The way that it's currently done in the normal Flutter is by using const strings where you have to keep track of the code required to migrate that database. We'll be using a different package to perform our migrations. Once you've downloaded the code, you can open it up in Visual Studio Code and get your emulator ready. All it has is a starter view, which has a starter view model that calls the initialize function. That function will then navigate to the to do view where you have some UI where you can add a to do item to your database. I've also set up the locator where we register our services with our locator instance. If you run the application, you'll see that it shows you a UI that has a text field at the top and a floating action button in the bottom right. These UI elements are hooked up to function calls and we'll use that to fill out our database calls and implement the actual functionality. Let's complete the setup and then implement our database service. You can open the pubspec.yaml file where we'll add the SQF Lite package. We'll add version 1.3.1 plus 1. Once we've done that, we can create a new file under the services folder called database service. In that file, we'll create a class with the name database service. Then inside of the database service, we can create a new private field called database, which is of type database. Then we can also create a new function called initialize, which returns a future and we'll mark that as a sync. The first thing we want to do in that initialize function is to open the database. This requires us to pass in the path to the database and for that path we'll create a constant string at the top of the class called db name and we'll set that equal to to do underscore database dot sqlite. Then we can pass the db name into the open database and set the version as one. Next thing to do is to go to your locator file and register the database service as a lazy singleton. And to complete all the code for the setup, you can open up the startup view model file where we will call the initialize call on the database service. We'll start by getting the database service from our locator and then we'll simply await the initialize call before we navigate to the to do view. Now we can actually go ahead and create our database scheme. My main focus for the package that I introduced next is to create a readable schema. The reason for this requirement was because I was developing a client against an API and throughout the development we would have to change the schema of the database because there's some things that we didn't know about the API. So how this is usually done using the FQLite package is you will in this onCreate function, this will be called only when the database is created, it will pass you the database as well as a version number. In this function, you would usually call db and then run a query on that database to create the schema that you want to run. You can pass in a raw SQL query which will create the schema or do whatever you want to do with the database as soon as it's been created. So after two months of development using these helper functions on the database object, we saw that it's not maintainable in the long run, specifically when doing schema migrations. The user version wasn't being kept between debug builds and it was also not reliable in terms of when it wants to upgrade and it wasn't clear how we should actually do the upgrades. We have used a better approach to this, which I'll show you right now. This package that I built called SQF Lite Migration Service actually uses the pattern that the client uses on the backend. The way that they did it is by storing all of the SQL for the migration in actual SQL files. You will name that file starting with a version number. And as you can see there, you will supply the file names to the migration service. 
the servers will automatically extract the queries and apply that to your database if the version is lower than the file that it's currently looking at. It will then very reliably using the shared preferences keep track of your current database version and only apply the migrations that is required to get you to the latest files applied in that migration files list. I've published this package. This is what we use in two production apps for the same client and it has been working extremely well. So we can start off by adding the package into the PubSpec SQL Lite Migration Service version 1.0.1. And then you will scroll down to the assets section of your PubSpec file and there you will add the assets forward slash SQL forward slash entry. This will include all of the SQL files which we will store in an assets folder in the root and inside of that assets folder we'll create a folder called SQL. So any of the assets we add in that folder will be available in the bundle for the package to read. The last thing to do for the setup is to register the database migration service with the locator. Then we can go ahead and create our schema. In the SQL file, create a new file called one underscore create schema dot SQL. This will be the first file that will take the database from version zero to one, where we'll create all of the tables required. In this case, we'll create a new table called to do's, which has an ID integer that is a primary key, a title that is text and a complete property that is an integer. Queries are separated by a semicolon and spaces are ignored, so you can format your SQL however you want to. If you wanted to add multiple queries, you can simply just use a semicolon and then add a space and add more additional queries below that. They will all be split up and run individually and you can see in the logs that they are being applied to your schema. Once you have created the schema file, you can open up the database service and in the top of the database service class, we will get the database migration service from our locator. Then under the part where we open the database, we will call migration service dot run migration. Then we'll pass in the database that we opened and for the migration files, we will pass a list of strings that match the exact name of the files that you want the migration to apply. In this case, we'll supply it with one underscore create schema dot SQL as a string value. The database service also allows you to pass in a verbose flag, which will print out all of the migrations being applied so that you can see what's happening as you are migrating your database. If you run the code now and you wait for it to start up, you should see in the debug console logs being printed out that show you that the database service starts at zero. It then runs a migration from the file that we supplied and it tells you what version you'll be going to when that file is applied and after that it will print out all of the queries that is run from that file. Since I made this video the logs in the database package has been updated to be a bit clearer and also have the database migration service name in front of the logs. To be sure that everything works fine you can run the code again and you should see only the database service with the value 1 being printed out. This means that that migration wasn't applied again after the version has changed. I was contemplating about going over the basic SQL functionality, mostly because I have not a lot of experience with SQL and every time I want to do the most basic queries, I have to Google the query and then just paste that into my functions. But to complete the tutorial and allow you to do everything from this tutorial, I will show you how you can read the database and insert values and update values in the database. The first function we'll create is get to do's, which will be a future that returns a list of to do objects. We'll start off by querying the database and passing the to do table name to that query. At the top of your file, you can create a new constant string called to do table name, which will match the table that you created in your first schema file. This will be stored in a list of map objects, which we can then use to go through the list and then map all of them to a to do object using the from JSON function on the to do object. 
Once that is complete, we will call to list and that will be the end of the function. The second thing to do is to add a to do to the database. We'll create a new function that returns a future called add to do. It will take in a named parameter of type string called title. We'll start the function off by creating a try catch statement and in the catch block we'll simply print out could not insert the to do and then we'll print out the exception as well. Then in the try block we will await a call on the database called insert and we will insert into the to do table name and provide the values which will be a construction of the to do object and then calling the to JSON on that object. That will turn it into a map which will be inserted into the database using the matching column names. And the last thing we'll go over is how to update a database entry. We'll create a function called update complete for to do. This will take in a named parameter called ID of type integer and a named parameter called complete of type bool. We'll start the function off again by creating a try catch block and then simply printing out could not update the to do with ID and supplying the ID as well as the exception afterwards. Then for the actual update, we will call the update function on the database. This will take in the name of the table, which will be to do table name. And then for the values, you only supply the value that you want to update. In our case, we'll create a map with a key string and the complete value will be either one if complete is true or zero if complete is false. To tell the database which entry to update, you can supply a where clause where you can say id equals question mark and to replace that question mark, you pass in the where arguments in the where args property. The value passed in to update should already exist in the database schema. The SQLite package will not create that column for you if the property in the update map doesn't exist. For all of the functions, including the query, you can always apply the where property as well as the where arguments. Now we can go ahead and hook up the database to all of the empty functions in the to do view model. We'll start off by getting the database servers from the locator. And then for the future to run, we will simply return get to do's from the database service. The next thing we'll add is the add to do function where we will call add to do on the database service and pass in the title. Now you can see that we're using a future view model, which gets the results from a future and then stores it in the data property for that model. This function is usually only run once and once the data is retrieved, we display that data in the listing as I'm showing on the screen now. Once we've added a new to do item, we want the data to be fetched again from the database and then redisplayed. To do that, all we have to do is call the initialize function after we add the database, which will rerun the future to run function and then store that value in the data property and then for the set complete for item we will call the update complete for to do function on the database service pass in the id that matches the id on the index and then also pass in for the complete value the value passed to that function and we want the items to reload after this has been done. So we will simply call initialize after setting the complete item. If you run the code now and you head over to the right side where you can enter a few values, you can type in some text and when you press the plus button, it should show up on your list. You can also type in Rezo Coder is awesome and then add that and it will also show up in your list. We can check that the complete tick functionality works and to make sure that it persists over time we will restart the application and when it starts up again it will be in the same state that it was when we left it the focus of this tutorial is definitely not how to run the most efficient and effective sql database it is focused on creating a readable schema management system. To do that, we will add a new property to the to-do class called description. Once we've added that property, we can 
generate the new code by running the build runner build function and while that function is running we can go to the sql folder in the assets folder and create our new migration file so in that sql folder create a new file starting with the number two and an underscore called add description dot sql in this sql file we will alter the table and pass the to do's table name we will add a new column called description and it will be of type text then you can open up the database service and in the migration files list we'll add the new file name to underscore add description dot sql now before we run the code let's add the description into the code and the ui as well we'll start by adding it into the to do view model add to do function and passing in the description as a string value then we'll pass that description to a named parameter called description on the add to do function on the database service when we have that value we will pass that description value into our to do construction and that should be it for the add to do function if you open up the to do view now you'll see that we need to pass in the text for the description so we'll create a new controller called description controller then passing in the description controller dot text value and also clearing that controller after the value has been added next up we want to add the text field for the description select the padding widget and copy and paste that below the same widget then we'll change the controller to the description controller and change the hint text to description and now that we've been able to input the description the last thing to do is to display that under the title we'll simply copy paste the title text and change it to description if it's now we want to show an empty string and then for the style of this text we will set the color of the text to colors.gray if you run the code now and you open up the debug console you'll see that the migration starts at version 1 and then applies the new file that was found and takes us from 1 to 2 this will do the alter table sql query and then tell us that the migration has been completed to test this out we will add a new to do and we'll type in something in the to do text as well as add a description and i'll set it to sql light schema management once you click the add button you'll see the new to do item showing up with a grayed out description value so as i said the goal of this tutorial was specifically to show you how we've created a readable SQL schema management system for Flutter. Now if you like this tutorial you can head over to fullstacks.com where we have a large list of tutorials and another list of things we have is snippets which is shorter versions of tutorials with small basic pieces of functionality that you can use in any application. Please let me know what you guys would like to see next and I'll see you guys next week.